Welcome to Shook Cover Look, where we squeeze the bigger picture of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here uh, for what I believe will be Writer's Quote of the Week number. Well, it's not going to be Writer's Quote of the Week anymore. It's just going to be Writer's Quote. 14. Uh, and this comes to us again from Papa, Ernest Hemingway. Um, Ernest Hemingway on writing, edited by Larry W. Phillips, as found in this on page 134, where he says, uh, in a letter to F. Scott Fitzgerald, in 1934, for Christ's sake, write and don't worry what the boys will say, nor whether it will be a masterpiece, nor what. I write one page of masterpiece to 91 pages of shit. I try to put the shit in the wastebasket. You feel you have to publish crap to make money and live and let live. All right. But if you write enough, and as well as you can write, there will be the same amount of masterpiece material. And I think this is, this is interesting on many levels. Um, and interesting probably on as many levels as it, is, as it is informative. Interesting for the fact that this is Ernest Hemingway in a personal plea to F. Scott Fitzgerald in order to get him to write more, but also to quit turning out tripe. Um, he is of the opinion here that F. Scott Fitzgerald is writing to publish as opposed to simply pursuing the craft. So F. Scott Fitzgerald, in his, in his attempt to live off of his writing is turning out stories just to have them published so he can make the money off of them. Hemingway is arguing that's not the way you do it and your reputation will falter because of it. And while I don't know necessarily that his reputation did falter because of it, because F. Scott Fitzgerald is largely known for one book, I will say that those people to whom writing is important, to whom literature plays a key role, are the ones let down by the tripe that F. Scott Fitzgerald put out. Uh, Bernice Bob's her hair. But therein lies an important question. Need that be the case? I don't like a great majority of what F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote. But I really love The Great Gatsby. Should I think less of F. Scott Fitzgerald for Bernice Bob's Her Hair? This is sort of the same argument. Um, I, I hope I don't lose too many people here by mentioning sports. So people still say that Joe Montana is the greatest quarterback of all time. And I might be getting the numbers wrong here. Uh, it's been a long time since I've heard the argument presented. But the, Joe, Monta Joe Montana is the greatest quarterback of all time because he won every Super Bowl he went to. He went to four. He won four. They fault Tom Brady, though he has more rings, because, well, I'll, I'll present it equally. When he had won four Super Bowls, he had also lost three, I believe. So they were making the argument that Joe Montana was better for going four for four than Brady was going four for seven. That argument doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. All it means is that Joe Montana lost one week earlier more times than did Tom Brady, meaning Joe Montana was excluded from the playoffs and or eliminated from the playoffs on more occasions than Tom Brady. Tom Brady won the extra games to get to the big game more often than did Joe Montana, but was not undefeated in those big games. That pesky Eli Manning. So on that, in that regard, I think I fall, I, I, I hold fault to what it is that Hemingway is trying to communicate here. That there is some discrepancy between the great stuff you write and the good stuff you write is absolutely true. 
But should you be, should it be held against you when you put the good stuff that you write out there? I don't think so. That said, the original plea, for Christ's sake write and don't worry what the boys will say, nor whether it will be a masterpiece, is absolutely solid advice. I think perfection is the enemy of productivity. Uh, I know that it is often said good is the enemy of great, but perfection is the enemy of productivity. So many people put off writing at all because they don't quite have every sentence formulated in their mind, because they do not know every nuance of their story before they tell it, because perhaps they don't feel they have the tools to write the story in the grandeur that it is presented in their mind. And while I do agree there are occasions where that is true, I have a sweetheart novel called Of Larks and Crows, and every time I sit down to write it, I sit down with this gusto of inspiration. And I realize I don't have the tools to write that story. I don't have what that story takes. There is something missing from my toolbox. That said, there are still absolutely stories that I can tell. And it is a, it, the burden is upon me to tell them. No one else is going to. And no one else is certainly going to tell my stories the way that I would. And that is one of the great things about voice in writing. One of the things that I think makes... I think makes voice the most important aspect of writing. When you pick up a Hemingway story, you know you're in a Hemingway story. And if you gave any of his stories to another writer to tell, they wouldn't be the same. Might they be better? Indeed they might. Might they be garbage? Indeed they might. Um, but had F. Scott Fitzgerald penned The Old Man in the Sea and Hemingway penned The Great Gatsby, I doubt very heavily that either would have lived as long as they have. Um, still, each of these writers had written things, novels in fact, that pale in comparison to their other novels. Surely, at some point in the process, that was evident to the writer. Hemingway pinning one of his novels must have looked at it and said, this is not uh, a farewell to arms. And still he persisted. It makes me wonder, it does raise Another question, that question is, what is the level of differentiation between your greatest and your goodest that you should be comfortable with? Is there some margin in your good writing that you understand, I could put this out there and feel all right about it, versus... You know what, this, this is not ready. This needs a couple more drafts. For me, it has always been a level of comfort with the ideas at play. And I think the way that I have always gotten there, I believe very heavily in writing a first draft with passion. That is, that is putting all of the fury necessary to the piece in the piece and then letting it, and then letting it cool down uh, much in the way that steel is squelched right you have to let that period pass uh, before really putting it to the test and when you reread it oftentimes it is the the time in between that resting period, when something will present itself to you. You know what I think this piece is about? This piece is really about X, Y, Z. Let me spruce up 
this first paragraph to make it look that way. Let me spruce up the last paragraph to sort of reflect the first paragraph so that there is some link to be made. Let me repeat a phrase in here one or two times. Uh, because that is the essence, if you will, of the piece. Uh, or even if you won't, I don't give a damn. So that is this episode. That is this writer's quote coming to us once again from Ernest Hemingway to F. Scott Fitzgerald from Selected Letters, page 408. But from this book in page one, on page 134, uh, hit the like button if you did like this. It really helps us out here on the channel. If you would like to help us grow here on Strip Coverlet, maybe consider sharing this on some form of social media. And if you'd like to help us create more content like this on, on Strip Coverlet, there is, as always, a link to our Patreon to be found in the description below.